Summary of Messenger by Lois Lowry A young man by the name of Maddie is trying to rush through the preparation of supper in order to get to Forrest in time to check on something. His guardian, a blind man named Seer, teases Maddie about what he needs to see in Forrest in a fun way. Seer tells Maddie to start a lamp after dinner. Maddie remembers that Seer once told him that Forrest, which is dangerous for most people, is just an illusion. Maddie walks by the nice teacher mentor's house, hoping to see mentor's daughter Jean, but instead he runs into his friend Ramon. Maddie is invited to Ramon's house for dinner, but he lies and says he has a message to give. Village doesn't let people lie, but Maddie needs to get into forest by himself. This is dangerous for most people, but Maddie can walk through forest without getting hurt. Because of this, he hopes to get the real name messenger one day, since he can take notes through the forest to other towns. He finds a small frog, which is what he was looking for. Maddie hears Keening, which is crying and singing about a death on his way home. The next day, Ramon tells Maddie that Gatherer was killed by Forrest because he got caught in a net and died. Ramon talks about how great his family's new gaming machine is, and Maddie thinks he'd like one of his own. Head, the head of the village, keeps an eye on village while the boys go fishing. He notices something strange in Forrest. Later that night, Maddie tries to tell Seer that they should trade for a gaming machine, but Seer says it would be a mistake to give up books or music in the evenings for a machine that gives out candy. He tries to get Maddie to understand that Ramon's parents probably gave up something important or valuable for the gaming machine, but he won't let Maddie go to a trademark so he can learn how to trade. Maddie goes to Leader's house one morning to give him a message. Leader's house is full of books from his old settlement, which he sees as proof that his old settlement is improving. Leader tries to find out from Maddie if there are fewer fish in the river than there used to be, since people are saying that there isn't enough food. Maddie says that maybe it seems like there are fewer fish now because he is getting older and the world seems smaller. He gets the messages and then tells Seer what they say. Both of them are surprised that the message says there will be a meeting and a vote to close village to strangers and that Mentor is leading the effort. Seer asks if Mentor has traded, but all Maddie knows is that he doesn't have a gaming machine. A few days later, Maddie tells Seer that Jean's dog had puppies and that Jean will let Maddie have one. Maddie goes to see the puppies, but when he gets there, Jean is upset because two of the puppies have died and the last one and the mother are both very sick. Mentor is out with Stocktender's widow, but Maddie sends Jean to get plants from Herbalist and tries out his hidden power in private. It feels like lightning in his hands, and when he touches something, it gets better. He heals both dogs and then goes to bed, too tired to do anything else. He remembers how painful and scary it was when he accidentally fixed the frog a few weeks ago. The next day, a group of strangers shows up. Maddie and Seer join Ramon in greeting them, but then a group led by Mentor comes and starts chanting that they need to close village. Leader breaks the tension and tells Mentor that they'll vote on this later. Maddie notices that Mentor's big scar isn't as noticeable as it used to be. He also sees that Mentor looks taller and thinner. When Maddie finds out that trademark is happening later, he promises to go. He talks Seer into letting him go and tells Seer that he doesn't have anything to trade. However, Seer warns Maddie that he has things that people will want. After dinner, Maddie goes to the station with his friends. Maddie looks around and sees that everyone seems nervous and hiding something. Maddie pays close attention when Trademaster shows up with only a strange book. Mentor shoves people out of the way so he can go first. He then stands on the stage next to Trademaster. Mentor tells Trademaster what he wants to trade for when Trademaster asks, trade for what? Maddie thinks the trade is about Stocktender's wife because he sees her laughing. Then, Trademaster asks, what did you trade away? Mentor tells Trademaster the answer in a whisper. The same thing happens to everyone else. Later that night, Maddie tells Seer what happened. He says that as everyone left, he saw a usually nice woman make fun of her husband's limp. He also noticed that the scar on Mentor is no longer there. 
A week later, Gene tells Maddie that it's time to get his puppy. Mentor is back on a date with Stocktender's widow, so Gene and Maddie can have a private talk. Gene says that Mentor is giving up his deepest self in order to win the love of Stocktender's widow. Maddie is shocked, but he figures out that this explains why Mentor wants to close Village. He isn't sure if he can use his power to help Mentor. Not long after that, Maddie goes to Leader to give him words and ask him to give the puppy a real name. He tells Leader what he thinks Mentor and Trademart are up to, and Leader gives the puppy the name Frolic. Over the next few days, as Maddie walks around Village, he runs into a woman who just moved there. She asks Maddie if he's seen her son Vladek and tells him she's afraid about Village closing down because her other kids are still at her old town. Maddie and Jean keep talking about how Mentor has changed at the market, and Jean starts to cry about how Mentor has suddenly lost interest in books and poems. People who swapped say at the meeting that they're sick of helping other people, and the vote to close Village passes. Seer figures out that this means his daughter Kira will be here in three weeks. He tells Maddie that both she and Leader have special gifts and asks her to go to his old town to help her get to town. Leader says that he knows Maddie has a gift and tells him not to use it at his house. Leader uses his gift to look beyond, but the forest is thickening too much and he can't see through the trees to Kira. He tries to stop Maddie from going, but Maddie says he has to. Leader is able to see beyond the surface and asks Kira if she is pretty. Maddie isn't sure she is, because she is like his sister and has a bent leg. In the afternoon, Jean comes by to say goodbye to Maddie. She sees that a tapestry in Sears' house is all tangled up, and she tells him that herbalist put Ramon and his sick sister in lockdown because he was afraid of an epidemic. By the second day in Forest, Maddie knows what Leader meant when he said that Forest is darker, smells worse, and is harder to find food in. He thinks about his childhood and how he first linked Kira to Seer, who she thought was dead. As he goes on, he gets sicker and sicker until he feels like Forrest is spitting him out near Kira's house. She is happy to see him, but Maddie knows that this will be his last trip back. Maddie watches Kira move as she gives Maddie soup. He decides he needs to fix her leg so they can move faster. But when Maddie brings it up, Kira says she doesn't want to. She says she's fine the way she is. She doesn't believe Maddie when he shows off his gift on himself, but she does show him hers. She embroiders a picture of the future with her shimmering hands as she works. It shows her and Maddie going into forest and Mentor building a wall. The next day, they decide to leave. After just a few hours, Maddie is glad Kira didn't let him fix her because she is used to walking with her stick. She packed her needlework frame and carries it on her back. She told Maddie she feels safe with him. Forrest doesn't feel safe, but Maddie doesn't tell her that. Back in village, Leader looks beyond and tells Seer about Maddie and Kira's growth, but he doesn't say that Forrest will kill them. The sounds of Mentor working on the wall are heard. Kira shows Maddie her bloody feet that night. Maddie knows that these are warnings from the forest, so he stays awake to listen. The next day, Forrest starts to hurt Maddie by dripping deadly sap onto his arms. It hurts and makes his arms swell up, and Kira starts to notice that Forrest smells bad. Maddie says the next day that he has no idea what's going on with Forrest. They try their best to get through a dangerous swamp, but when they get out they are cut, dirty, and can barely breathe. Over the next few days, Maddie starts to escape his pain by imagining that he is flying above his body. One afternoon, when they stop to rest, Maddie cuts a plant that is trying to wrap around his ankle. Kira pulls out her stitching tools to use her gift and says that Leader is coming to get them. A few mornings later, when Maddie wakes up, he and Kira are still living, which surprises him. At this point, Leader has been in the forest for a few days and is bloody and hurt. Maddie and Kira are in the same situation. Maddie's nose is bleeding, and Kira can barely see and won't move on. Maddie asks her to use her gift to try to meet Leader halfway. Surprisingly, it works, and the two are able to meet in beyond. Leader asks Kira to tell Maddie to use his gift. They talk about how lost and hurt they are. 
When Maddie hears this, he groans and falls back, thinking it's too late. But as he rolls around in the mud, his fingers start to shake. His whole body starts to tighten and flow into forest, healing it. Everyone in village starts to get better, and Mentor stops making the wall to read a poem. Leader and Kira are feeling better, and Maddie feels like he was picked to do this. He floats above the forest and figures out what Seer meant when he said it was an illusion, it was a mirror of people's fears, lies, and power. Now, as Maddie is dying, it is blooming. Leader finds Kira and tells her that Maddie's real name is Healer, even though he wanted to be called Messenger. He brings Maddie's dead body back to village. About the author. Lowry was born in Honolulu, Hawaii Territory, on March 20, 1937. His parents were Catherine Gordon Landis and Robert E. Hammersberg. When she was born, her parents gave her a Norwegian name because her father was from Norway. However, her paternal grandma didn't like the name, so they changed it to Lois. Her father was a doctor in the army, so her family moved around the U.S. and the world a lot. She went to middle school in Japan, but she got her high school diploma in New York City. Lowry went to Pembroke College, a women's college that was part of Brown University but is now a part of the university itself. She only stayed there for two years. She quit school when she got married, and the two of them had four kids. After her husband got out of the service, they moved to Maine, where Lowry got her bachelor's degree from the University of Southern Maine. She has always written, and her first book, A Summer to Die, came out in 1977. Before that, she worked as an independent journalist and photographer. At this point, she and her husband made the decision to split up. Lowry has written several books for kids since then. The Giver and Number the Stars have both won Newbery Awards, and The Giver has been one of the most debated books in American schools. She spends time in both Massachusetts and Maine. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.